presentation is on a common parasitic disease of both pet animal and human one that is ankylostomiasis here is my introduction it is a highly pathogenic disease of mostly the pet animal and other carnivores and also it infects the man and pigs and it caused by a hematophagous nematode under the genus ankylostoma and family ankylostomiae it is commonly known as hookworm because of the anterior part of the adult parasite is bent resemble a shape of a hook it is very common in india and has a worldwide in distribution it has a synonym such as ankylostom dermatitis hookworm disease ground itch water itch colic itch in men there are mainly five species which cause disease in the host that is ankylostoma caninum cause disease in dog fox and wolf then ankylostoma selanicum which cause disease in dog cat cybed cat and tiger and ankylostoma brasiliensis cause disease in dogs and cat then ankylostoma tb forme cause disease in cat then ankylostoma duodenale cause disease in men and pig all of the five species has a common site of predilection that is small intestine so how can you differentiate the all the species we can differentiate it on the basis of their morphology of the mouth part as you can see the first picture is showing the mouth part of ankylostoma caninum has a three teeth on either side at the ventral margin of the buccal capsule whereas the second picture is showing the mouth part of the ankylostoma duodenale which has two teeth on either side at the ventral margin of the buccal capsule and the third picture is showing the mouth part of ankylostoma brasiliensis where the ventral teeth consist of a large and a small one on either side and the fourth picture is showing the mouth part of ankylostoma tb form where the teeth on the ventral margin are slightly larger than that of ankylostoma canina here the life cycle it has a six developmental stage egg larvae stage 1 larvae stage 2 also known as reproductive form stage then the base stage three which is infective stage also known as filary form stage then the base stage four an adult uh, the unamenated eggs are uh, voided in the feces then the embry embryonation of the egg is occur under diamental condition and the development development of l1 larva is occur inside the egg cell then it hatch out and it hatches and the rabidity form larva is developed in the environment that is the l2 stage and then from rabidity form larva develop into infectious filary form larva that is l3 stage under the environmental condition and that and it can infect the definitive host either by skin penetration or through oral route and cause are uh, different pathogenic lesions in the definitive host so here is the different route of infection uh, first one is by oral infection which is occurred by injection of the larva uh, it may directly develop into adult in the small intestine and it causes lesions like enteritis hemorrhagic enteritis or the larva can penetrate the oral epithelium and follow the pecutinous route of infection in this case the pups below 3 month of age the larva can enter the heart or lung through water circulation and then it enter to the intestine and being cough up and the larva is follow the route of tracheal migration through bronchi and bronchia and get mature uh this second root of 
infection that is the precutaneous infection in this case the l3 larva leaches to the lung through the blood circulation and molted to stage 4 in the trachea bronchi and then cough up and enter the small intestine and transform into adult the third route of infection is the transcholesterol or lactogenic infection in case of lactating animal the larva appear in the mammary gland and the suckling animal get infection through the milk or colostrum the fourth route of infection is the transuterine infection in this case the pigment which in this case the pigment which the larva can cross the placental barrier and enter the fetus and cause infection in the fetus the here is the pathogenesis the pathogenesis can be occur uh, can cause by the migrating larva and also the adult one so by so here by the larva can penetrate the skin of the host and cause dysgema ulceration dermatitis and it also enter into the lung and breaking of the pulmonary capillaries and also cause the destruction of the alveoli which is result in pneumonia and secondary bacterial infection as you can see in the picture i have attached here uh, there is a migration of the larva in the alveoli so the infection uh, so the pathogenesis by the adult form as we know the worms are vessels occur a vessel feeder uh, it sucks blood and mucosa by their powerful teeth and oesophagus a large amount of blood is drained out a record is there uh, a, an adult a single parasite uh, can serve 0 0.1 ml blood per day the parasite secretes some anticoagulant which inhibit the clotting and promote the fibrin clot dissolution. As a result of this anticoagulant activity, it prevents the clotting of blood while feeding on villus capillary. And after the parasite detach, there is a continuous blood loss from the site of attachment. As a result, there is a severe anemia is observed, and liver and other organs are become ischemic. There is a hemorrhagic enteritis ulcer. Uh, continuous loss of blood and loss of serum protein result in hyperproteinemia, which result as a bottle jaw condition. So here are some pictures showing the pathogenesis in uh, defined organ. The first picture is showing the ankle stomach in the intestine. As you can see, uh, the Oral cavity and esophagus is prominent. The second picture is showing the necropsy in a dog, where you can see the ulceration and the and and the enteritis of the small intestines, uh, which is become totally pale in color. And the third picture is showing the migration of larva in the liver. Now come to the clinical finding. There is a marked anemia, acute normocytic anemia. Normocytic and normochromic anemia, which is followed by hypochromic and microcytic anemia, which is evidenced by a pale eye mucosa. There's a bloody diarrhea, bottle jaw condition, progressive loss of body condition. Uh, there is a weakness, loss of appetite, poor body coat. Respiratory signs are there. Uh, there is a skin lesion, such as ischemia, ulceration, and dermatitis of the feet. A computer diagnosis diagnosis can be done on the basis of clinical signs such as the drug color uh, drug red color diarrhea uh, there is a and the confirmation di diagnosis is done by the fecal sample examination so for flotation technique uh, presence of thin shell ovalex uh, blunt interior and posteriorly or the and presence of eight embryonic shell is the differentiating characteristics now differential diagnosis uh, it can be differentiated from tissue 
and stichiasis has a thick shellac with bipolar plug and from spirocircosis uh, from the clinical signs such as the it vomit uh, repeatedly after trying to eat there is a hypertrophic osteopathy and the eggs are small and elongated in physiolepteriasis there is a dog faces and the thick eggs are thick shell and the toxic caresses there is a pot belly condition and the detection of the eggs uh, detection of the spherical pitate shell egg of the toxicara canis cati and putularum and the oval and smooth shell eggs of the toxicara leonina there is a treatment uh, in dogs the treatment the commonly it can treated with the fenban dazol at a dose rate of 50 mg per kg body weight a total dose and should be given in three divided dose for three consecutive days and a moxidectin at a dose rate of 0.7 mg subcutaneously and a combination of prasicontel and pyrantel pomade is used at a dose rate of 5 mg for 5 kg of body weight parallelly. In case of cat, it can be treated with uh, ivermectin at a dose rate of 0.024 mg per kg body weight parallelly. A combination of prasicontel and pyrantel pomade at a dose rate of 5 mg per 20 kg of body weight uh, at a uh, or orally and the fenbendazole is used at a total dose of 50 mg and should be given at 3 divided dose for 3 consecutive days. A combination of melbimycin oxime and pasicontel at a dose rate of 2 mg for 5 kg of body weight or orally is effective. That is the control. So how can you control it? Uh, you should maintain the proper deworming schedule of the animal. The feces should be disposed of properly. The canine should be kept dry and clean. Uh, the transmembrane transmission can be prevented by fan bandagel at a dose rate of 25 mg per kg body weight per orally and should be given uh, to the pregnant bitches from day 40 of pregnancy to the day 2 after whelping. And the treatment of bitches with a ivermectin at a dose rate of 0.5 mg per kg body weight on two occasions that is from 4 to 9 days before whelping and uh, 10 days later. Here is a genotic important. It causes urinous larva migraine or ground itch, plumbar itch in human being. When the infective stage of the larva penetrate the unprotected skin. It migrates through the dermal layer of the skin and causes puritis, dermatitis and rashes. It is most commonly occur when we are walking in a barefoot or sitting on a contaminated soil or sand. Here is the love cycle is given. Now the bibliography, I have taken all this information from Wikipedia, Parasitpedia, AnimalAdvice.com, Mark Veterinary Manual and I follow one textbook, this is textbook of veterinary parasitology by SC Mandal. Thank you.